Well, folks, um, no intro today. As you can tell, this is a more serious slash, you know, policy-based video because I need to talk about something today that I don't think I've really ever talked about on this channel before. The effects of immigration on the West, in most, mostly America, but in general, what I'm going to talk about today has affected not only America, but Canada, the entirety of Europe, so essentially the West. This topic is very serious. This is a very serious topic that we need to talk about. I'm getting sick and tired of people, both on the left and the right now. Some people on the right are advocating for mass immigration. Oh, it's just legal immigration we support, but illegal immigration we don't. It's the same thing. So I'm getting sick of both sides on this argument. The right has become more anti-illegal immigration, but pro-legal immigration. While the left essentially wants to flood America with anybody, even illegals. So essentially, a lot of people become the same on immigration, but I'm here today to debunk this whole immigration is good for a country argument. Well, again, this is a disclaimer. I'm fine with immigration in limited amounts. You heard that right here, in limited amounts. I don't want to ban completely. I just think that's impossible. But if it's limited amounts with a good vetting process and it doesn't, you know, fabrically change a country's culture. I am fine with that. I am perfectly fine with that kind of system. And that's not what we currently got. Now, before we actually talk about the immigration stuff in a few seconds, we got to talk about what really made me want to make this video. What happened in Germany a couple days ago? Or mostly like 10 days ago? Read this headline. The entire AFD party, you know, the right-wing, you know, nationalist party in Germany, which, by the way, they're not Nazis. I'm getting sick and tired of people saying they're Nazis. They're not. Rule they are suspected threat to democracy, opening door to mass surveillance of the opposition party. Well, you know why they're considered a threat to democracy? You know, you want to know why? Just come down here. This is why. Just this right here. The court argued there were signs of the AFD sought to reduce non-German ethnicities in Germany. You heard that right, folks. This is why. They were censored. Now they're getting mass surveillance on them. Because they want to make Germany more German. Huh? I thought this was some, you know, bullshit, you know, the B article, whatever they're called, the onion. I thought this was some bullshit article that was a meme or something like that. This is real! Because the AFD, the Alternative for Germany Party, I think that's how you, you know, say it. It's like Deutschland. But the point is this. They want to make Germany less non-German and more non-German and more German, not the other way around. You get the point. They want to make Germany more German. That somehow is a sign that they're undemocratic. They're neo-Nazis. We must censor them. And again, I usually wouldn't care because this is in Germany, but I know there's going to be a few people that really buy this nonsense that Oh, immigration's good. If you're against immigration, you're a Nazi. You're undemocratic. It's bullshit. So today we're going to be talking about the actual effects of immigration on a country. We're not going to be talking about, you know, what the exact policy should be. But in a nutshell, I want limited quantities of immigration, right? That, you know, and the immigrants that do come are actually vetted and... They don't change the culture of a country or demographics so much that what happened the past 20 years in the United States ever happens again. So let's get right into it. So we have to talk about these quote-unquote conspiracy theories about immigration. So the left and the media, you know, every time somebody brings up immigration that, hey, this immigration stuff, this is changing the demographics of America quickly. This is flat out, you know... Kind of a replacement of white people. And again, I know some people, you know, not going to say who, they take it a bit too far with the whole, like, replacement theory idea. And the media runs with those idiots that, you know, talk about the whole white replacement stuff. Well, folks, I want to tell you something. Some of those people are idiots, but the white replacement, quote-unquote, theory, this idea that, hey, they're trying to replace white people with, you know, immigrants from third world countries. Well, I got to say one thing to you. That's not a conspiracy theory. Again, some people take it a bit, you know, too far. But the point is this. You know why it's not a conspiracy theory? 
Because the United Nations proposed it. You heard that right, folks. The United Nations. This isn't some homeless guy down the street. This is the quote-unquote United Nations, you know, the global organization. They wanted this years ago. I think this was like wrote a decade ago, I think it was. See, again, go read it yourself. They seriously say, hey, these countries that are low fertility, you know, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Korea, Russia, etc. Mostly, you know, the West. Again, there's a couple countries like Japan and Korea. Instead of, you know, fixing that low fertility rate via, you know, making people have more kids via economic policies, you know, fixing the cultures of those countries. No, instead, we're going to flood those countries with immigrants that have nothing similar with those countries. Yeah, this is the United Nations. This isn't some random thing that somebody said. So, yeah, you get the point. This idea that's a conspiracy theory that's trying to replace white people. Again, some people take it too far. But flat out, it's true. It's replacement migration. They're replacing the demographics and the culture of a country with a culture and demographics that have nothing to do with that country. And this is my first argument and with against immigration. Immigration does not benefit a culture. Sure, we had immigration beforehand, you say, but, you know, immigration, you know, in the, you know, 1900s, you know, we had a lot more immigrants back then than we do now. So why do you support that immigration, but not now? You're from that 1900s Polish group. Well, folks, I got to say one thing. People that make the argument because, you know, my ancestors came here in the 1900s from Poland makes me pro-immigrants. Like, no, here's the difference. Poland culturally, while not the same as, you know, the rest of Europe, like France, you know, Germany, whatever, they're similar enough where assimilation, you know, it takes a couple of years, but it can seriously, you know, assimilate those people, Polish people in particular. And again, that's what I am. I am Polish. The difference is now you got Mexicans, you got Latinos, whatever you want to call them, flooding America, not assimilating, and from cultures that have nothing to do similar with American culture. We have our own identity. This idea that we don't have our own culture is bullshit. So you want to see some proof of that? This is the Afghanistan stuff. Again, this was over a year ago. This was over the Afghanistan, you know, refugee stuff. Just read this. It is sometimes justifiable for a man to beat his wife. 10% of Americans said yes. 43% of those in Afghanistan said yes. Hmm, wait a minute. I thought immigrants were supposed to be peaceful. I, saw, I thought they were supposed to be all loving. Hmm. Would, you, would not like to have unmarried couples living together as neighbors. 42% of people in Afghanistan said yes. You get the point already. I mean, do I really have to scroll down here? I mean, look at this. Make Sharia law the, the law of the land. 99%. America's like maybe 5%. So how are they similar? How is this beneficial to the country of America? I mean, sure, again, I'm against adultery, but making a severe stoning punishment, stoning is a punishment for adultery, 85%. Again, how is this, you know, beneficial to the country of America? And a lot of these countries, you know, a lot of these immigrants, very similar. Now, again, not saying, you know, the this part they're similar on, but a lot of these immigrants, they have similar beliefs. Not saying they support like, the death penalty for leaving Islam, but they are definitely, you know, not the same compared to Americans. Not remotely the same. I mean, seriously, how in the world are these the same? How are they similar at all? They're completely different cultures. If this was, you know, a poll of Polish people, It'd probably be less than Americans, but it would still be close enough where it's like, okay, Polish people, relatively speaking, would be more similar to immigrants. So they should be fine to limit, in limited quantities, immigrate to America. This is just absurd. I mean, 
How? Why would people want this? Again, I'm not saying, you know, I'm against, I'm against adultery, by the way. That's what I'm saying, but I'm, I'm against stony people over it. So again, how are they similar? How does this benefit America? How does this enhance the culture of the country? It doesn't. It causes just a flat out race war. That's what you're seeing in Chicago. That's what you're seeing in New York City. That's what you're seeing in L.A. Neighborhoods of like little China or freaking Chinatown, you know, little Mexico, little Italy, whatever you want to call them. They're starting wars and shit on the street because they're completely different cultures fighting over this land. It's like, seriously, how is this good for America? Now, I'm going to get the people in the comments to say, well, immigration actually is beneficial economically. I mean, you look at the study from the, you know, the Koch brothers that say immigration benefits America. Bullshit. Again, I'm going to link these, sor these sources in the description down below. Go read them yourselves. How is this beneficial? So look at this. Number eight percent of U.S. population comprised of immigrants. In 1970... It was 4.7%. So what I would want it to be around 5 to 4% is immigrant population. Look at this. It has exploded. In fact, the current projection makes the 1900s look like freaking nothing. <laughs> I mean, if this keeps up, we're going to have almost 20% of all Americans be immigrants. That is way more. Than the immigrants from the 1900s. And by the way, they're not similar whatsoever. Again, these are not Europeans. Again, I don't have an issue with people from Mexico or whatever immigrating. The issue is these people will never assimilate. They're not culturally similar to us at all. It's just a fact. I would I would prefer them to, you know, assimilate. It, but it would be significantly harder than those from Scandinavia, from Poland, from Latvia even. They would, while be different, not so different where it would take decades to assimilate them. It would take them years, but not decades like it would for other groups. So that's what I'm saying. You read the rest of this. I mean, the economic impact is just, oh boy. Look at this. Total populations ages 16 to 65 in 2015 was 207 million. 67 million people were not working. All right, only 140 million had a job. And reminder, this is with immigration. 2,000, 132 were not, were working. 132 million. The population for that age group has increased by two, almost 30 million. It's only increased by 8 million for those actually working. Again, how is immigration benefiting the country economically? And this is the most damning part. Look at this. All immigrants, those that are foreign-born, make up 51% of all welfare. This is just a fact. Even any other study would show very similar. The native population would be like 30%. Again, it's, this is a bit outdated. This is from 2012. But you got the point. You get the point that, hey, they suck up welfare even. And they don't pay tax. I mean, look at this. For every dollar a Native American, you know, a Native-born American has paid in taxes, foreign-born will pay basically 90 cents. So they get more benefits, more welfare, but they pay less in taxes. Yeah. Again, where is the benefit for these immigrants, you know, coming to America? And even the whole GDP argument. Look at this. 98% of all, you know, increases in GDP goes to immigrants. So only 2% goes to the plebs, goes to the working Americans that already lived here for generations. 98% either goes to big businesses or the immigrants that took the jobs to somebody else. Again, how is this beneficial to the country? I want to hear your thoughts about this in the description, in the comments down below. Again, I'll link these two articles in the description down below. Go read them yourselves. Go read more articles. Again, I'm not against, you know, all immigration. I'm fine with limited amounts, all right? I'm just against this idea of replacing America with people that have nothing in similar with us, with us whatsoever. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed.
to all of you.